Hello, how do you do? Welcome to this sleep clinic where we aim to work with you and discover why you have issues sleeping and how we can fix them. We have a numerous list of activities that we will complete today and we're going to really just take our time to fully try our best to understand you a little bit better. So this session may take a few hours I understand that you have been briefed on this, but I thought I would give you a quick introduction to explain what we will be doing today. So of course this is the welcome, and we will move forward with some personal questions asking you about different habits you may have different activities you may complete on a daily basis. And then we will proceed with a medical checkup. A full medical checkup includes your heart rate, blood pressure, temperature check, oxygen levels, teeth check, and of course a scalp and skin check too just to make sure there's nothing there underlying that could be causing your insomnia. Well then, once we have analysed your medical and informative score results, we will work through a series of different activities that will help you sleep, including your scent test, where we will find the right combination in our aromatherapy diffuser. We will also have a pillow menu and test to see what you find most comfortable. We'll have a sound test, discovering which sounds help you feel at ease and some may say tingly. We'll do some very childlike and comforting experiences as well, including the dot dot line line game, back tracing games, hair play, scalp massage, face touching, and when you're finally feeling settled, we'll finish with a bedtime story, and hopefully you will be asleep by the end of this. How does that sound? Excellent. Well, without further ado, let's get started with our first section. I just need to confirm, of course, your personal details. Can you please confirm your name? Uh, and your date of birth. And the first line of your address. Postcode or zip code. Alright, and you have some contact details. For example, a mobile number that you can confirm and perhaps an email address. Great. Well, thank you for confirming your personal details. Now I need to just check your medical history as well. So, at this day, do you or anyone in your family have any history of 
heart problems or blood pressure problems, diabetes, cancers, insomnia, sleep problems, depression, anxiety. Any bone problems or joint problems such as arthritis, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis. You think of anything else that may be relevant such as deep vein thrombosis, any other conditions that may require medication. Alright. And have you within the last 30 days taken any new medications and any medications that you're on for longer than 30 days okay great thanks for confirming now we're gonna get a little bit more personal with your sleeping activities okay if you don't want to answer a question, that's okay, you can refuse. But they're nothing too personal, just will help me understand a little bit more about your daily activities and what may be causing your lack of sleep. So, can you confirm who you currently live with? If there's only adults over the age of 18, if there's children, there's pets, even. Mm -hmm. Alright. And do you all have a similar bedtime or do you go to bed at different times? Alright. How would you describe your general mood. So what I mean by that is I know that we can get some down days or we can have some happy days but in general on average how would you describe your mood? Would you say that you are generally a happy person, a content person, an indifferent person, an unhappy person or maybe perhaps a particularly angry or stressful person. Okay. Do you take anything at all for your mid that you haven't already disclosed? Okay. And when did you first notice or first remember that you started to struggle with sleep issues. Okay. In the past, have you taken anything at all for sleep issues? hours of sleep would you say you get per night? So this may be 10 hours, it may be 7, it may be 5, 4, 3, maybe none. Okay. What time would you normally go up to your bed for sleep? And what are your habits during the evening before you go to bed? Are you normally watching the television? Are you reading a book? Are you on your phone? Your 
computer? Are you working? Are you perhaps at the gym? Anything at all? Just the most common thing we can find you doing before bed. <laughs> okay. Do you ever watch anything when you get into your bed? Are you usually on your phone when you go to your bed? That can be playing games, maybe scrolling through social media, watching videos. Alright. Do you have your, um, your setting for nighttime on your device? Does the screen show yellow colours rather than blue? Alright. How many times on average would you say that you wake up in the middle of the night? And do you normally find that you wake up for any particular reason? Perhaps the toilet or disturbances outside or disturbances from within your household? When's the last time that you would consider having something to eat or drink before you go to your bed? Right. Would you say that you have caffeine late at night? Now this is not just tea and coffee, this can be fizzy juice, sweets, biscuits, anything with sugar at all. Right. Are you ever woken up by anything at all during the night, such as a pet or somebody else within the household? Not other than the reason you disclosed previously. How would you describe your stress levels? Are you moderately, and you know, a calm person? Are you moderately stressed? Are you very stressed? Are things stressful currently in your life? Are you familiar with how to manage your stress? Such as using techniques like mindfulness, And would you say that you can be an anxious person? So by this, it can be mild anxiety where you maybe worry a lot about things and that can make you feel really quite panicked at times. Maybe you experience more severe forms of anxiety where you can feel heart palpitations and other symptoms that can occur from anxiety. Do you have any health-related fears? Well, that was very, very informative. Thank you very much for providing those fantastic part pieces of information that we can piece together a more detailed picture. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to conduct the full medical examination. Make sure you try and remain nice and comfortable, okay? I'll take the details down on this. Here we are. We're going to start first of all with your blood pressure, okay? So just remain nice and calm. Just breathe in and out. And in. And out. And in. And out. Okay. I'm just going to 
just keep breathing nice and slowly and I'll listen to your heart Sounds okay. No obvious signs there of any myocardial issues. Alrighty. We're just gonna have a look at your blood pressure now as well. I'm just going to repeat this two more times just to make sure that we have an accurate reading since we are using the mechanical blood pressure today. blood pressure score that is consistently within the average range so there's no cause for concern there at all so excellent right we're just gonna now do a little fingertip oximeter just to check your Oxygen saturation level, so right. This takes no time at all. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop your finger in. Okay. Here we are. I'm just recording it now. for a response. Okay, so 97%. That's very good, okay? And your, your beats per minute. This also records your pulse, so 
Your pulse is recording very similar to what I took down, which was 72, and this is recording at 76, so it's to be expected, so that's good news. We're going to use this digital thermometer now to have a look at your temperature. Okay, so it's coming up with green, happy face. So you're sitting right within average. So that's good. No cause for concern now. Going to now have a look within your eyes, okay? We'll also have a look in your ears too. So if you can just focus here. If you can just focus on me. Great. And if you could just focus on my finger while I have a quick look in there. Just keep focusing on my finger. gonna put on the earpiece now and we're gonna have a quick look in your ear so I'm gonna start with your left ear to begin with and then we'll move on to your right ear okay hold still that's it okay that looks good and this one I'm going to have a quick look inside your mouth. I know we're not dentists here, but looking inside your mouth may be able to help me see if there's any dental issues that could be causing you not to sleep. Because believe it or not, dental issues are more common at making us not sleep than you might think. So. open wide for me. Thank you. Okay, 
it or sore in some way, please. sense test very quickly. I'm going to use a sharp object and you just have to let me know if you can feel this, okay? And then I'm going to use something soft and you also need to let me know if you can feel this, alright? Okay, I'm going to start with the sharp object. It won't be painful, but it will engage with your painful receptor. Not if you can feel it. concludes our medical test. We'll just get the room ready now for the next section of this sleep clinic. Now that we have examined you from head to toe and learned a lot more about your 
lifestyle activities and how you normally sleep at home, we're going to move on to seeing if we can help you and fix your sleeping problems, which is the best bit. So we're going to begin today with the pillow menu. It's called the pillow menu because you may recognise or realise that that terminology sounds familiar and this is because in I would say four star, five star hotels you often see a pillow menu for the hotel guests and normally on this menu you're able to choose a different style of pillow that you will find suits you best because hotels want you to have the most relaxing stays. So that's what we have today is a number of different pillows with different materials both on the outside and inside of the pillow. Now most pillows comprise of either fibre, down, so goose feathers, or memory foam. And we have each of these here today. We also have different types of cases. Some can be cotton, some more the elusive Egyptian cotton, 1000 thread count. There are more shaggy, rougher materials and softer materials such as velvet for you to try. So, let's start with the first pillow. This is our first one to show you today. This is a velvet fibre pillow that has a very thick and soft case. It's a pink velvet and internally comprises of fibre which is a little harder than some of your other pillow types. So if you feel that you do better with a firm pillow, then this may be the pillow choice for you. And again, you can have any type of outer case you want, but this pillow has been selected with the velvet pillow cover. And we do believe that this works the best, this particular combination for the fibre. But you get a lot of support, there's not a lot of sagging. So definitely recommended for those who need a firm pillow. Alright. This is pillow number two. This is the Panda Bamboo Memory Foam Pillow with a very soft outer case. And with memory foam, this is extremely soft material that almost moulds the shape of your head has been described to the likeness of sleeping on a cloud and sometimes people do find the memory foam mattresses too soft but with a normal mattress and a memory foam pillow that can make the perfect combination for a good night's sleep. It's very good if you're somebody that often wakes up with a stiff or a sore neck. We highly recommend memory pillows in that instance 
and those have found that they find that they don't wake up as often when they use a softer pillow like this one. Our next pillow is the Goose Down pillow and you can hear the difference. This has a cotton case which is your most standard fabric for pillow covers. This is in between hard and soft so we would call this a firm or medium pillow. And it is very, very comfortable. Down is definitely a comfortable option, but it may not be suitable for all, depending on your worldly views and beliefs. Down is used in many outdoor wear, jackets and coats, to keep people warm. And the same goes for down duvets. This here is the down pillow and is an all round excellent pillow for comfort for any type of person. We then have some fibre pillows to show you with different cases. So this is rougher pillow choice and this is more of a shaggy fur pillow. Some people find it soothing to sleep on such a pillow whereas it is a little like Marmite and others find it uncomfortable due to touching the skin, itching it and also the little hairs can get up your nose quite easily. But for others, it does bring great comfort because it's extremely soft and cosy. Very, very soft. You often find this type of pillow on a living room sofa. And I'm sure you will have at some point fallen asleep on the sofa against one of these. But this is just to show you an alternative case cover. And we have a final pillow. This is our two-tone case. On one side there is soft velvet and if you find you're getting too hot you can flip to the other side which is more like a tweet. It's a little bit rougher can be good on hot days. You may find this a little bit more cool and it can definitely help you sleep by cooling your face down. So this here is a cover that is situated on again a fibre pillow. So there are no feathers involved. We do also have a blanket to show you. It's a cashmere blanket. Just to show you how adding some extra things to your bedroom can help for the ultimate comfort. Okay. So you'll feel that this is extremely soft and extremely light. Cashmere um, jumpers, but also blankets are an excellent addition in the winter due to them being very soft and feeling extremely cosy or as an alternative to your duvet cover in the summer when it is far too warm. There's also other types of blankets that you can get including weighted blankets that are proven to help you sleep better. Having weights 
helps with relaxation and helping you feel secure and safe in your bed. But this here is the cashmere. It's very, very soft. We love this here. So that was the pillow menu and selection choices there for you to consider. We're going to move on to your scent test now, where we have multiple different aromatherapy oils, 12 to be exact, and you're going to smell them, and any scent that you find either makes you feel calm, relaxed, sleepy, or happy, we will put into the aroma therapy diffuser. You may find a smell is pleasant, but it doesn't stimulate any mood changes. In these instances, we will pass on them as they will be non-effective on your mood. So we'll do this in groups of four. I'll start with the first four. Alrighty. So, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to place it under your nose and let you tell me how it makes you feel. Okay? And then I will let you know what it is. So, this is the first one. How does that make you feel? I agree. It's uplifting, happy, but also relaxing at the same time. Okay, we will keep this for your diffuser. This was Lang Lang. Okay, okay try in this next one. Okay, pleasant, but no change. That was Bergamo. <laughs> Not for you, no bother. That was Sage. And this one here. really sweet, happy smell. Well, that was sweet orange and we will keep that too. So, so far we have Lang Lang and sweet orange that will go into your aromatherapy diffuser. I'll pop this beside. tree. You're indifferent to that one, no bother. Okay, what about in this one? No. That was actually geranium. The flower geranium. Okay, that made you feel happy. Okay, well that was lemongrass. We'll keep that aside. And this one here. Indifferent. Well, that was patchouli. So we'll just pop the lemongrass down with the lang lang and sweet orange. Alrighty, the next one. Okay, 
strong, but you find it relaxing. Alright, well that was Eucalyptus. We'll keep that aside. This one here. Yes, that is lavender, and that made you feel relaxed, so we'll keep that as well. Okay, the next one. Very strong citrus, too strong. Well, that was actually lemon, but I agree, the lemongrass is a little gentler, so we'll say no to the lemon. And this one here. You like it, but it doesn't make you feel anything. Well, that was actually cinnamon. So we'll put the lavender and the eucalyptus beside the lang lang, the lemongrass, and the orange. These are our last four. That makes you feel calm. Okay, that's good. That was Palma Rosa. This one. It's very strong. That was frankincense, so that's a no. Okay. Yeah, that is also, it, it does smell a little bit like tar. That was cypress, so no to that one. And the final one. Nice, but indifferent. Okay, that's fair enough. It was grapefruit. So we're going to put the palmarosa down with the rest. So you have selected six essential oils. So I'm going to just pop them into the diffuser and we'll do a little movement with the diffuser and just let you breathe in and feel the diffused air and steam just moving through and around your body. Okay. We're just gonna put a little of this on. this on. So it's just going to start blowing that out. Maybe the light's stable. I'm gonna hold it still while you experience the smoke.
I'm going to sit there staying and just let it continue as we move on to the sound test. This is our first one. you find these relaxing, tingly, or neither? Okay. Our next trigger. you find that relaxing, tingly, or neither? Find that tingly, relaxing, or neither. This is our next item. This 
this a bottle brush This is the next item. Do you find this relaxing, tingly, or neither? relaxing, tingly, or nice. This relaxing, tingly, or neither.
is this relaxing, tingly, or neither? you find this relaxing, tingly, or neither? Okay. Okay. Well, that concludes our signed test. It was very interesting to learn about what sounds you find relaxing and I've just switched off her aromatherapy oils as they should be well and truly diffused into the air now. How are you feeling? Great. Well, you are halfway through today's sleep clinic. So, in our next section, we really encourage you to start to even try to go to sleep. I'm just going to get this cleaned up and bring out the props and tools we're going to use for the next section. So in this next section of the sleep clinic, we're going to move a little bit more towards touch with helping you sleep. And I'll be coming a little bit closer with some whispers mixed in just to see how you feel. We're going to be doing some gentle face touching, including touching your eyebrows, stroking your face, touching your hair, and then we're going to do some lullabies ear to ear just to see how that makes you feel, as well as some childhood games and some just nice really help set the mood. And I want you to try now to close your eyes and just take in what's around you. Okay. So we're going to begin with the face touching. So I'm just going to get a little bit closer now. I'm going to start here. I'm just going to gently, very lightly touch Almost just working here. Working very softly and gently here. With this really soft touch. Really soft touch is a very, very important. and can feel incredibly relaxing. So, just with one finger each time, just gently, really gently touching. Really gently just stroke now. Does it feel good? Good. That's exactly what we want to hear. And we'll just move around a little bit. Gently. 
and to see how that feels. You are like my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. So please don't take my sunshine away. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when the skies are they make you feel tingly and calm and relaxing? Excellent. That's good to hear. Well, we're going to move on to some childhood games now. And let's a bit of back tracing as well. So we're going to begin with the dot dot line line game. We're going to do this three times. Got to just close your eyes. All right. Okay. Dot. Dot. Line. Line. Spider is crawling up your spine. Da. 
tight, squeeze, cool, breeze. Crack an egg on your head, and there you got a little ship. game is the drawing a snake on your back and you got to guess which finger. I draw a snake right down your back and guess which finger I touch you with. One more time. Think. It sits in the night sky. Yes, that's right. It's a 
the semi crescent me Well done.
And did you find any parts of this sort of touch section particularly more relaxing than the others? Okay. Yeah, the eyebrow touching. The hair scratching. The dot dot line line game. That is an absolute favourite for us here at this sleep clinic. We really enjoy seeing the reactions that this causes and often people who have never experienced any relaxing tingly sensations often will experience this for the first time with this unique dot dot line line game. So we are very pleased. So we're going to then move on to our final section of the sleep clinic. You're doing really well. So we are now moving on to our final section of this lovely relaxing sleep clinic with you today. And as you obviously know, <laughs> we have moved position now to one of a more relaxing and sleep inducing position. So you are lying on a bed, ready to close your eyes and receive sleep. So please try your best to focus on relaxing and sleeping because I'm going to read you a story, a bedtime story for stressed out adults. And this is an excerpt from The Wind in the Willows that we're going to read today. So just listen to my voice, close your eyes, and get ready to sleep. The mole had been working very hard all morning, spring cleaning his little home. First with brims, then with dusters, then on ladders and steps and chairs, with a brush and a pail of white wash, till he had dust in his throat and eyes, and splashes of white wash all over his black fur, and an aching back and weedy arms. Spring was moving in the air above, and in the earth below and around him, penetrating even his dark and lowly little house with its spirit of divine discontent and longing. It was small wonder then that he suddenly flung down his brush on the floor, said, bother, and oh blow, and also hang spring cleaning, and bolted out of his house without even waiting to put on his coat. Something up above the calling was calling him imperiously and he made for the steep little tunnel which answered in his case to the gravelled carriage drove owned by animals whose residences are nearer to the sun and the air. So he scraped and scratched and scrabbled and scrooged and then he scrooged again and scrabbled and scratched and scraped working busily with his little paws and muttering to himself, up we go, up we go, till at last, pop, his snout came out into the sunlight and he found himself rolling in the warm grass of a great meadow. This is fine, he said to himself, this is better than whitewashing. The sunshine struck hot on his fur, Soft breezes caressed his heated brow, and after the seclusion of the cellarage he had lived in so long, the carol of happy birds fell on his dull hearing almost like a shout. Jumping off all his four legs at once, in the joy of living and the delight of spring without its cleaning, he pursued his way across the meadow till he reached the hedge on the further side. Hold up, said an elderly rabbit at the gap. Sixpence for the privilege of passing by the private road. 
He was bowled over in an instant by the impatient and contemptuous mouse, who trotted alongside the outside of the hedge, chafing the other rabbits as they peeped hurriedly from their holes to see what the row was about. Onion sauce, onion sauce, he remarked jeeringly, and was gone before they could think of a thoroughly satisfactory reply. Then they all started grumbling at each other. How stupid you are! Why didn't you tell him? Why didn't you say? You might have reminded him, and so on, in the usual way. But, of course, it was much too late, as is always the case. It all seemed too good to be true. Hither and thither, through the meadows, he rambled busily along the hedgerows, across the corpses, finding everywhere birds, buildings, flowers, budding, leaves, thrusting, everything happy and progressive and occupied. And instead of having an uneasy conscience prickling him and whispering, whitewash, he somehow could only feel how jolly it was to be the only idle dog among all these busy citizens. After all, the best part of a holiday is perhaps not so much to be resting yourself as to see all the other fellows busy working. He thought his happiness was complete when, as he meandered aimlessly along, suddenly he stood by the edge of a full-fed full river. Never in his life had he seen a river before, this sleek, sinuous, full-bodied animal chasing and chuckling, grippling things with a gurgle and leaving them with a laugh to fling itself on fresh playmates that shook him themselves free and were caught and held again. All was a shake and a shiver, glints and gleams and sparkles, rustle and swirl, chatter and bubble. The mole was bewitched, entranced, fascinated. By the side of the river he trotted as one trots when very small. By the side of a man who holds one spellbound by exciting stories, and when tired at last, he sat on the bank, while the river still chattered on to him, a babbling procession of the best stories in the world, sent from the heart of the earth to be told, at last, to the insatiable sea. As he sat on the grass and looked across the river, a dark hole in the bank opposite, just above the water's edge, caught his eye, and dreamily he fell to considering what a nice, snug dwelling place it would make for an animal with few wants and fond of a bijou riverside residence, above flood level and remote from noise and dusk. As he gazed, something bright and small seemed to twinkle down in the heart of it, vanished, and then twinkled once more like a tiny star. But it could hardly be a star in such an unlikely situation, and it was too glittering and small for a glowworm. Then, as he looked, it winked at him, and so declared itself to be an eye, and a small face began gradually to grow up around it, like a frame round a picture. A brown little face, with whiskers. A grave round face, with the same twinkle in its eye, had first attracted his notice. Small, neat ears and thick, silky hair. It was the water rat. Then the two animals stood and regarded each other cautiously. Hello, mole, said the water rat. Hello, rat, said the mole. Would you like to come over? inquired the rat presently. Oh, it's all very well to talk, said the mole rather pettishly he being new to a river and riverside life in its ways. The rat said nothing but stooped and unfastened a rope and hauled on it, then lightly stepped into a little boat which the mole had not observed. It was painted blue outside and white within, and was just the size for two animals, and the mole's whole heart went out to it at once, even though he did not yet fully understand its uses. The rat sculled smartly across and made fast, then he held up his forepaw as the mole stepped gingerly down. Lean on that, he said. Now then, step lively. And the mole, to his surprise and rapture, found himself actually seated in the stern of a real boat. The 
this has been a wonderful day, said he, as the rat shoved off and took to the skulls again. Do you know, I've never been in a boat before in all my life. What? cried the rat, open-mouthed. Never been in a... You never. Oh, well, I. What have you been doing then? Is it so nice as all that? asked the mole shyly, though he was quite prepared to believe it, as he leant back in his seat and surveyed the cushions, the oars, the rowlocks, and all the fascinating fittings, and felt the boat sway lightly under him. Nice! It's the only thing, said the water rat solemnly, as he leant forward for his stroke. Believe me, my young friend, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, half so much worth doing as simply messing about in boats. Simply messing, he went on dreamily, messing about in boats, messing. Look at rat, cried the mole suddenly. It was too late. The boat struck the bank full tilt. The dreamer, the joyous oarsman, lay on his back at the bottom of the boat, his heels in the air. About in boat, or with boats, the rat went on composedly, picking himself up with a pleasant laugh. In or out of them, it doesn't matter. Nothing seems to really matter. That's the charm of it. Whether you get away or whether you don't. Whether you arrive at your destination or whether you reach somewhere else. Or whether you never get anywhere at all. You're always busy and you never do anything in particular. And when you've done it, there's always something else to do. And you can do it if you like, but you'd much better not. Look here. If you've really nothing else on hand this morning, supposing we drop down the river together and have a long day of it. The mole waggled his toes from sheer happiness, spread his chest with a sigh of full contentment and leaned back blissfully into the soft cushions. What a day I'm having, he said. Let us start at once. Hold hard a minute then, said the rat. He looped the painter through a ring in his landing stage, climbed up into his hole above, and after a short interval reappeared, staggering under a fat wicker luncheon basket. Shove that under your feet, he observed to the mole, as he passed it down into the boat. Then he untied the painter and took the skulls again. What's inside it? asked the mole, wriggling with curiosity. There's cold chicken inside, replied the rat briefly. Cold, tongue-cold, ham-cold, beef-pickled, gherkins, salad, fresh rolls, cress sandwiches, spotted meat, ginger, beer, lemonade, soda water. Oh, stop, cried the mole in ecstasies. This is too much. Do you really think so? inquired the rat seriously. It's only what I always take in all these little excursions. And the other animals are always telling me that I'm a mean beast and cut it very fine. The mole never heard a word he was saying. Absorbed in the new life he was entering upon, intoxicated with the sparkle, the ripple, the scents and the sounds and the sun. He trailed upon the water and dreamed long waking dreams. The water rat, like the good little fellow he was, sculled steadily on and forbore to disturb him. I like your clothes awfully, old chap, he remarked after some half an hour or so had passed. I'm going to get a black velvet smoking suit myself some day as soon as I can afford it. I beg your pardon, said the mole, pulling himself together with an effort. You must think me very rude, but all this is so new to me, so this is a river. The river, connected the rat. And you really live by the river? What a jolly life. Buy it and with it and on it and in it, said the rat. It's brother and sister to me, and aunts, and company, and food, and drink, and, naturally, washing. It's my world, and I don't want any other. What it hasn't got is not worth having. And what it doesn't know is not worth knowing. Lord, the times we've had together, whether in winter or summer, spring or autumn, it's always got its fun and its excitements. When the floods are on in February, 
and my cellars and basement are brimming with drink that's no good to me, and the brown water runs by my best bedroom window, or again, when it all drops away, and shows patches of mud that smells like plum cake, and the rushes and weed clog the channels, and I can potter about dry shod over most of the bed of it, and find fresh food to eat, and things careless people have dropped out of boats. But isn't it a bit dull at times? The mole ventured to ask. Just you in the river and no one else to pass a word with? No one else to... Well, <clears throat> I mustn't be hard on you, said the rat with forbearance. You're new to it. And of course you don't know. The bank is so crowded nowadays that many people are moving away altogether. Oh no, it isn't what it used to be at all. Otters, kingfishers, dab chicks, moorhens, all of them about all day long and always wanting you to do something, as if a fellow had no business of, of his own to attend to. What lies over in there? asked them all, waving a paw towards a background of woodland that darkly framed the water meadows on the side of the river. That? Oh, that's just the wild wood, said the rat shortly. We don't go there very much, we river bankers. Aren't they, aren't they ni very nice people in there? Said them all, a trifle nervously. Well, replied the rat, let me see. The squirrels are all right, and the rabbits, some of them. But rabbits are a mixed lot. And then there's the badger, of course. He lives right in the heart of it. Wouldn't live anywhere else either if you paid him to do it. Dear old badger. Nobody interferes with him. They better not, he added significantly. Why? Who should interfere with him? asked them all. Well, of course there are others, explained the rat in a hesitating sort of way. Weasels and stoats and foxes and so on. They're all right in a way. I'm very good friends with them. Past the time of day when we meet and all that. But they break out sometimes, there's no denying it. And then, well, we can't really trust them. And that's the fact. The mole knew quite well that it was quite against animal etiquette to dwell on possible trouble ahead, even to allude to it. So he dropped the subject. And beyond the wild wood again, he asked, where it's all blue and dim and one sees what may be hills or perhaps they meet in something like the smoke of towns, or is it only a cloud drift? Beyond the wild wood comes the wide world, said the rat, and that's something that doesn't matter either to you or me. I've never been there, and I'm never going, nor you either. If you've got any sense at all, don't ever refer to it again, please. Now then, here's our backwater at last, where we're going to lunch. Leaving the main stream, they now passed into what seemed at first sight like a little landlocked lake. Green turf sloped down to either edge, brown snaky tree roots gleamed below the surface of the quiet water, while ahead of them the silvery shoulder and foamy tumble of a weir arm in arm with a restless dripping mill wheel that held up in its turn a grey gabled mill house, filled the air with a soothing murmur of sound, dull and sm smothery yet with little clear voices speaking up cheerfully out of it at all intervals. It was so very beautiful that the mole could only hold up both forepaws and gasp, Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! The rat brought the boat alongside the bank, made her fast, helped the still awkward mole safely ashore, and swung out the luncheon basket. The mole begged as a favour to be allowed to unpack it all by himself, and the rat was very pleased to indulge him, and to sprawl at full length on the grass and rest, while his excited friend shook out the tablecloth and spread it, took out all the mysterious packets one by one, and arranged their contents in due order, still gasping. Oh my, oh my. At each fresh revelation. When all was ready, the rat said, Now pitch in, old fellow. And the mole was indeed very glad to be, for he had started his spring cleaning at a very early hour that morning, as people will do, and had not paused for a bite or sup, and he had been th through a very great deal since that distant time, which now seemed like many days ago. 
What are you looking at? said the rat presently. When the edge of the hunger was somewhat dulled and the mole's eyes were able to wander off the tablecloth a little. I'm looking, said the mole, at a streak of bubbles that I see travelling along the surface of the water. That is a thing that strikes me as funny. Bubbles? Oh, said the rat, and it chirruped cheerily in an inviting sort of way. A broad, glistening muzzle showed itself above the edge of the bank, and the otter hauled itself out and shook the water from his coat. Greedy beggars, he observed, making for the provender. Why didn't you invite me, ratty? This was an impromptu fear, explained the rat. By the way, my friend, Mr. Moe. Proud, I'm sure, said the otter, and the two animals were friends forthwith. Such a rumpus everywhere, continued the otter. All the world seems out on the river today. I came up this backwater to try and get a moment's peace, and then stumbled upon you fellows. At least, I beg pardon, I don't exactly mean that, you know. There was a rustle behind them, proceeding from a hedge, wherein the last year's leaves still clung thick, and a stripy head with high shoulders behind it peered forth on them. Come on, old badger, shouted the rat. The badger trotted forward a pace or two, then grunted, hm, company, and turned his back and disappeared from view. That's just the sort of fellow he is, observed the disappointed rat. He simply hates society. Now we shan't see any more of him today. Well, tell us, who's out on the river? Toad's out for one, replied the otter, in his brand new wager boat, new toys, togs, new everything. The two animals looked at each other and laughed. Once it was nothing but sailing, said the rat. Then he tired of that and took to punting. Nothing would please him but to punt all day and every day. And a nice mess he made of it. Last year it was houseboating. And we all had a go and stay with him on his houseboat and pretended we liked it. He was going to spend the rest of his life in a houseboat. It's all the same, whatever he takes up. He gets tired of it and starts on something fresh. Such a good fellow too, remarked the otter reflectively, but no stability, especially in a boat. From where they sat, they could get a glimpse of the main stream across the island that separated them. And just then a wager boat flashed into view. The rower, a short, stout figure, splashing badly and rolling a great deal, but working his hardest. The rat stood up and hailed him, but Toad, for it was he, shook his head and settled sternly to his work. He'll be out of the boat in a minute if he rolls like that, said the rat, sitting down again. Of course he will, chuckled the otter. Did I ever tell you that good story about Toad and the lock keeper? It happened this way, Toad. An errant mayfly swerved unsteadily athwart the current in the intoxicated fashion affected by young bloods of mayflies seeing life. A swirl of water in a clip, and the mayfly was visible no more. <laughs> Neither was the otter. The mole looked down. The voice was still in his ears, but the turf whereon he had sprawled was clearly vacant. Not an otter to be seen as far as the distant horizon. But again there was a streak of bubbles on the surface of the river. The rat hummed a tune, and the mole recollected that animal etiquette forbade any sort of comment on the sudden disappearance of one's friends at any moment, for any reason, or no reason whatsoever. Well, well, said the rat, I suppose we ought to be moving. I wonder which of us had better pack the luncheon basket. He did not speak as if he was frightfully eager for the treat. Oh, please let me, said the mole. So, of course, the rat led him. Packing the basket was not quite such pleasant work as unpacking the basket. It never is. But the mole was bent on enjoying everything, and although just when he got the basket packed and strapped up tightly, he saw a plate staring up at him from the gas, and when the job had been done again, the rat pointed out a fork which anybody ought to have seen, and last of all, behold, the mustard pot, which he had been sitting on without knowing it. Still, somehow, the thing that got finished at last without much loss of temper. The afternoon sun was getting low as the rat sculled gently homewards in a dreamy mood, murmuring poetry things over to himself and not paying much attention to Mo. 
but the moor was very full of lunch and self-satisfaction and pride, and already quite at home in a boat, so he thought, and was getting a bit restless besides, and presently he said, Ratty, please, I want to row now. The rat shook his head with a smile. Not yet, my young friend, he said. Wait till you've had a few lessons. It's not so easy as it looks. The mole was quiet for a minute or two, but he began to feel more and more jealous of Rat, sculling so strongly and so easily along, and his pride began to whisper that he could do it every bit as well. He jumped up and seized the skull so suddenly that the Rat, who was gazing out over the water and saying more poetry things to himself, was taken by surprise and fell backwards off his seat with legs in the air for the second time while the triumphant mole took his place and grabbed the skulls with entire confidence. Stop it, you silly ass, cried the rat from the bottom of the boat. You can't do it. You'll have us over. The mole flung his skulls back with a flourish and made a great dig at the water. He missed the surface altogether. His legs flew above his head and he found himself lying on the top of the prostrate rat. Greatly alarmed, he made a grab at the side of the boat and the next moment, splish. Over went the boat, and he found himself struggling in the river. Oh my, how cold it was, and oh, how very wet it felt. How it sang in his ears as he went down, down, down. How bright and welcome the sun looked as he rose to the surface, coughing and spluttering. How black was his despair when he felt himself sinking again. Then a firm paw gripped him by the back of his neck. It was the rat, and he was evidently laughing. The mole could feel him laughing right down his arm and through his paw and so onto his, the mole's neck. The rat got hold of a skull and shoved it under the mole's arm. Then he did the same by the other side of him and swimming behind, propelled the helpless animal to shore, hauled him out and set him down on the bank, a squashy, pulpy lump of misery. When the rat had rubbed him down a bit and wrung some of the wet from him, he said, Now then, old fellow. Trot up and down the towing path as hard as you can till you're warm and dry again while I dive for the lunch here in basket. So the dismal bowl, mole, wet without and ashamed within, trotted about till he was fairly dry while the rat plunged into the water again, recovered the boat, righted her and made her fast, fetched his floating property to shore by degrees and finally dived successfully for the lunch in basket and struggled to land with it. When all was ready for a start once more, the mole, limp and dejected, took his seat in the stern of the boat, and as they set off, he said in a low voice, broken with emotion, Ratty, my generous friend, I am very sorry indeed for my foolish and ungrateful conduct. My heart quite fails me when I think how I might have lost that beautiful luncheon basket. Indeed, I have been a complete ass and I know it. Will you overlook it this once and forgive me, and let things go on as before? That's all right, bless you, responded the rat cheerily. What's a little wet to a water rat? I'm more in the water than out of it most days. Don't you think any more about it and look here. I really think you'd better come and stop with me for a little time. It's very plain and rough, you know, not like Toad's house at all, but you haven't seen that yet. Still, I can make you comfortable and teach you to row and to swim, and you'll soon be as handy on the water as any of us. The mole was so touched by his kind manner of speaking that he could find no voice to answer him, and he had to brush away a tear or two with the back of his paw. But the rat kindly looked in another direction, and presently the mole's spirits revived again, and he was even able to give some straight back talk to a couple of moorhens who were sniggering to each other about his bedraggled appearance. When they got home, the rat made a bright fire in the parlour and planted the mole in an armchair in front of him having fetched down a dressing gown and slippers for him, and told him river stories till supper time. Very thrilling stories they were, too, to an earth-dwelling animal like Mole. Stories about weirs and sudden floods and leaping pike, and steamers that flung hard bottles, at least bottles were certainly flung, and from streamers, so presumably by them, and about herrings and how particular they were whom they spoke to, and about adventures, down drains, and night fishings with water, or excursions far afield with badger. 
supper was a most cheerful meal, but very shortly afterwards a terribly sleepy mole had to be escorted upstairs by his considerate host to the best bedroom, where he soon laid his head on his pillow in great peace and contentment, knowing that his new-found friend the river was lapping the sill of his window. This day was the only, the first of many similar ones for the emancipated mole, each of them longer and full of interest as the ripening summer moved onward. He learnt to swim and to row, and entered into the joy of running water, and with his ear to the reed stems he caught at intervals, something of what the wind went whispering so constantly among. end of the story and what a great story and message that was and as you are very sleepy now I'm going to leave you to sleep the rest of your time at this sleep clinic and get a full eight hours sleep we'll reconvene at a later date with your results but we've established what your routine is and what helps you relax so, I am absolutely positive that we will be able to fix your sleeping for the future.